Okay, guys, now let's move to Cypher Suites. Actually, guys, all these topics which I am explaining will be useful when uh, explaining the TLS handshake. Okay, so Cypher Suites and TLS 1.3 are combination of algorithms used for encryption and integrity. TLS 1.3 has only five possible Cypher Suites because it removed all unsecure Cypher Suites from TLS 1.2. In TLS 1.2, separate algorithms were used for encryption and integrity of the messages. However, in TLS 1.3, all Cypher suites use AEAD algorithms. AEAD stands for Authenticated Encryption with Associated Data. AEAD algorithms provide both encryption and authentication in a single step, making the process a lot simpler. I want to quickly explain again why we need integrity in addition to encryption. Okay, so say JP sends an encrypted message to YouTube. Shady can sneak in and modify the encrypted message, even though he does not understand anything. I explained in my previous video about HMAC how much damage he can do by flipping bits. Okay, so he flips some bits and he sends the message again to YouTube. YouTube without an integrity check will have the encrypted message but will have no idea that it has been tampered. So that's why in addition to the encryption, we need to add an integrity check to authenticate the message and make sure it has not been modified. So again, in TLS 1.2, we have separate algorithms for encryption and integrity. In TLS 1.3, on the other hand, we use algorithms that both encrypt and authenticate the message in a single step. Okay, back to our cipher suites. This cipher suite will use SHA-20 poly-1305 as an AED cipher, and SHA-256 will be used as a hash function for the key derivation function. Remember, the key derivation function is used in the handshake to derive multiple keys. Let's see at a high level how this AEAD cipher works. SHA-20 -SHA is a symmetric key encryption algorithm. Well, of course, it should be symmetric because, uh, as explained uh, previously, we use symmetric key encryption for data encryption for performance reasons and also because it's still as secure as the asymmetric key encryption. Some additional things to note about Shasha 20. It's developed by Google. It's known for its simple design and implementation, making it faster than AES. It is also known for its security and high speed. It generates a stream of pseudo-random bits called the key stream. This key stream is then XORed with the plain text to produce the ciphertext. And lastly but not least, Shasha20 is widely supported. Okay, now the fun part. Let's visualize how the elegant design of Shasha20 integrates with Poly1305. So, first step. The first step is to encrypt with Shasha20. At a high level, Shasha20 will take as inputs a shared secret key, a nonce, and a counter. Think of the nonce and the counter as params used to increase the unpredictability and randomness of the cipher texts. Actually, the 20 in Shasha20 refers to the number of rounds the algorithm goes through to process the data. These rounds involve various operations such as bit manipulations, additions, rotation, and XOR operations. There exists reduced round versions of Shasha 20 called Shasha 12 and Shasha 8. Okay, so based on these inputs, the Shasha 20 algorithm generates a pseudo-random stream of bits called the key stream. Then, this beautiful key stream is XORed with JP's plain text message to produce the ciphertext. In other words, the encrypted message. Uh-huh. Now we have the encrypted message. Now what? Now, 
we should do the authentication part of the encryption. Because, as explained, what if Shady sneaked in and modified our encrypted message? The encrypted message and unencrypted associated data, such as addresses, ports, timestamps, together with the nonce and the secret key, are inputs of Poly1305. Remember, AEAD refers to authenticated encryption with associated data. This is the associated data here. Poly1305 is a MAC algorithm, so it will output a message authenticated code. The message authenticated code, also referred to as the authentication tag, will be sent along with the encrypted message to YouTube. Okay, now YouTube needs to decrypt and verify the message. It would perform the exact steps but in reverse. First of all, verification. YouTube will calculate the authentication tag from the received cipher, the shared secret key, the associated data, and the nonce. YouTube will compare the calculated authentication tag with the received authentication tag. If they both match, YouTube knows that the received message has not been altered. Now that YouTube has verified the integrity of the message, now, well, of course, it needs to understand actually what the message is. So it should decrypt the message. The Shasha20 algorithm will be used with the all necessary inputs to generate the same key stream. This pseudorandom stream will be XORed again with the received cipher text to produce the plain text. And that's it. Here you go, guys. This was an example of an AEAD cipher.